So that's interesting about, you know, we identify as citizens of the countries we live in. I mean, in, in the sense that I have an American passport or so forth. You're a dual citizen. So how does that work? You're both Canadian and, and an American citizen. I wonder, does that give you any uh, extra insight if you you have multiple countries now that you can identify with? Does that change the narrative for you at all? Is that a helpful piece of context for us here? One of the things that was interesting was I was born in the United States, so I was an American citizen um, at birth. And then we moved to Canada and I became naturalized as a Canadian citizen. But before I did that, I took that step. I didn't want to lose my United States citizenship. So I wrote a letter to the State Department saying, can I retain my U.S. citizenship if I'm naturalized as a Canadian citizen? So they sent me a 20-page document with all the reasons why it's not a good idea. And, and then the last two or three pages were, however, it is possible. And <laughs> here's some things that if you decide to do it, mm -hmm. these will help you. One of the things was that I could make uh, a notarized statement that I don't intend to uh, forfeit my U.S. citizenship and I intend to fulfill the responsibilities of a citizen of the United States. Um, by doing the following things. And so I went to a lawyer and I, I drew up this, this paper and I made a list of things that uh, these are things that I will do as a faithful citizen of the United States of America. I will pay my taxes. I'll obey the laws. And I forget what all was on the list, but obviously military service wasn't one of them. But mm. um, here are the things that I will do as a faithful citizen of the United States. So I have also have a citizenship in the kingdom of of heaven, the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. that's my primary allegiance. That's my primary identi identity. I am a citizen of, of the kingdom of God. And so that's my primary identity. However, I live in Canada and I will. And when I took the, when I went to the citizenship ceremony to become a citizen of Canada, I had to affirm that I will be a loyal subject of Queen Elizabeth mm -hmm. the second. And so I said that... <laughs> I will be a loyal subject of Queen Elizabeth II. And so there are things that I do as a loyal citizen of the British Empire, I guess, and or the Dominion of Canada. But I still recognize that my primary allegiance is to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so I, I'll be a I'll be a I'll be a loyal subject of well now King Charles, but my primary loyalty is to the King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, and so I'm. I'll do these things as a citizen of the United States. I'll file a tax return. I'll do the things that they require. I'll be a loyal subject of King Charles, but I'm uh, primarily mm -hmm. a child of the King and and uh, a servant of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so, yeah, we do have responsibilities to the nations we live in, and there are rights and and responsibilities of being a resident and a citizen of uh, an earthly kingdom. But we always remember that we do have another citizenship and that's where our primary, that's where our primary loyalty is. And one of the things that um, the United States government said was, you have to think about if you become citizen of another country, what if those two countries go to war? Who are you going to, uh, what are you going to do? You could really, you could be drafted by both countries. <laughs> and uh, and we have to recognize there are times when the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this earth are in conflict. And and in those moments, our primary loyalty is to the, mm. is to the kingdom of God. And that's where, yeah. that's where we default to. 